Hey guys, Kilmodian here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're continuing on with the 8-bit CPU project. So what I have here is you'll notice that this entire section didn't exist before in our last setup. Um, and that's because I've taken our clock circuit, which is right here, and I've added all of these other chips. I think there's, mm, let's see, let's count it, uh, seven. Or this top one isn't used, so there's only six. There's six flip-flop chips, each with two chips inside, uh, two flip-flops inside. So that's a total of 12 possible bits that we can store. And that is equal to three bytes, uh, where each one byte is equal to four bits. Now I know in standard array, a byte is equal to eight bits, but since our ALU only works off of four bits, it doesn't really make sense to build an eight, uh, a three byte where each byte is eight bits entire thing, because that'll take up a lot more space. Uh, so I just did this for starters, and once we expand everything up to 8 bits, then I'll expand this as well. Uh, but this is kind of, this video is just to show you exactly how this is working, and then we'll go over why this is useful and how we're going to use it, and what we're going to do in the next time. So, as a little demonstration, let's just plug this in. Okay, clock's going. So, this bit is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, first bit. It stays for one clock cycle. This is the second bit. It stays for one clock cycle. Third bit. It stays for one clock cycle. Fourth bit. It stays for one clock cycle. Okay. And we already talked about why this happens in the previous video, so you can go ahead and watch that if you don't really understand what's going on here. So before, I believe we only had one flip-flop, um, so now I've just built like five more of them, six more of them. So if I say I wanted to store the number uh, three, I'd simply press these two, and the number three would stay for one clock cycle. So what we would do next is we would press, instead of having this little bus here, where we input the values and then the ALU calculates it, we would connect the, these up to it. We connect these up to here, right? So it would take whatever these LED values and so this LED would go to the first bit and this would go to the second, this would go to the third, fourth, and then we'd have this, these four correspond to our B value and they would go into the one, two, three, four pins on this bus and then it would calculate the ALU from that, right? Uh, and then we'd have this, the output, go into this third one. So now we can calculate based off of something, a number that we've stored, and then store that number. Alright, so I've connected the ALU up to the registers, where these first two registers count for A and B, and this answer that comes out of the ALU is for C, which is the top register. So if I just added 1 plus 0 as a test, we would see 1 be stored. And if I added 3 plus 0, so 3 is the A, and then 3 in the answer. Okay? So now if I added uh, 1 plus 1, keep it simple, we would see 2 in the answer. Okay, so pretty, pretty simple. We see how this is working. Now, there are some obvious faults with this, and I'm sure you noticed it, that we cannot choose when we want to read, when the ALU wants to read it from the bytes. And we cannot choose when we want to write either. So, to solve this problem, we just go over with some AND gates. And here we go. Let's just get to our page. Okay. So, oops. So, right now we have one of these blocks. This block is going to be made up of some tinier blocks, specifically four of them, because these four are one byte, so our bytes are four bits, just for simplicity reasons. So this is going to be one byte, all right, and that's going to be two flip-flops. So we have the clock coming in uh, already, okay, clock. You know, let me zoom in for you guys. Okay, so the clock's coming in. 
just like this. But the problem is that it's constantly resetting values. So every single time the clock goes high, the values all get reset to zero, which is bad because say we wanted the values to stay around for more than one rotation. Because if they don't stay around for more than one rotation, there would be no point in having more than three bytes of RAM. You see what I mean? The whole point of having more RAM or more CPU cache, like more bytes, more gigabytes, is so that you can store more values and have them sit there until they're called upon. And that's kind of what we want. So, instead of having the values reset constantly, we want a way to say, I want to write or I don't want to write. And we do this with an AND gate. So, this is the clock cycle, right? And we have that going into an AND gate. And then we have this be our enable line. Okay? Clock enable line. And then this output has a pull down resistor. Okay, and then that goes into our same little block of flip-flops, right, which is equal to this, right, That's these are the same thing. So, we kind of step through this, here's what we're going to see. The clock pulse is going to come in, and only if we say enable write, is the clock going to come in and we're able to write values. If the enable is not uh, high, then the value is going to be zero here on the clock and the value is going to stay forever. And you might say, well, how do we know that the value is going to stay forever? Look at this. That's how a clock, how a flip-flop works. So this little yellow, orange thing, this little, whoops, I'm still zooming. Okay, this orange wire here is what connects the clock for all of these uh, the clock together. Okay? Now if I take the clock and set it to zero, you notice I can't set values anymore. They're all locked in place. So, if I take a... if I set one of these values here and then quickly move it over to the negative, look at that. Value stays forever. It doesn't matter what I press. Values locked in. Now, alright? Now the bad thing is that since all of these are connected in parallel, every single one of the bytes, the issue is that they all get locked in place. So we cannot edit this byte or this byte just because we wanted to store this byte. Now, in a real life scenario, what we'd actually do and what we have to change is that is that we would each one of these is a byte, right? Byte. Byte. And byte. Okay. So, we have the clock pulse coming in to all of them, but before each and every one of them, we put an AND gate. Okay. Just like this. With our pull down resistors. Okay, and then they all go in as the clock. Okay, and then we have all of these connected to separate enable lines. Okay, so E1, E2, and E3. So each of these is connected to its own enable line. This way, we can, say, store the values of here forever. We can lock in the values here forever, okay? And we can still allow these ones to be edited, these two bytes. And we can only lock it in for that one. Now, we do the same thing, but on the right side of things. So, instead of constantly reading the values, this is for writing, we put a read one over here, okay? And this is to read. Okay. Now, the differences between the read and the write is that for the read, you can't put them all on the same AND gate, obviously. Right? Since there's four bytes, 
they each have to have their own AND gate. So let me just scoot this over. Okay. So the first bit has its own AND gate. The second bit has its own AND gate. Third has its own AND gate. And fourth has its own AND gate. Now each of these go all to the same enable line. Okay. So this way we can say read for all four of the bits, but the bits don't just get mashed together into one AND gate, and they each come out their own separate ways, which is what we want. Okay. Because back here, we would just connect all the AND gates into just, you know, one single connection, which would just effectively lose all the data, which is useless and stupid. So, we do this, so this way all the data remains intact, but we just have them all go to the same enable line. Right, we just connect all the enable lines in parallel for the single byte. So this is how we're going to control it, and we'll do that in the next video. So, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, go ahead and subscribe or give a thumbs up, and I'll just see you guys in the next one. Bye.